Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. I know, you clicked on this video, and it says something about the curly girl method in the title, and you're like, Jamie, but your hair isn't curly. It's straight. I'm aware of that, okay? But what I'm here to talk about today is how using the curly girl method has actually changed my hair for the better. The natural state of my hair is probably like a 2A or a 2B curl, which basically means it's just slightly wavy, but a little bipolar, and doesn't look cute without a lot of product and a lot of help. But I'm not here to whine about my schizophrenic hair follicles. In Instead, I'm here to share with you how implementing the curly girl hair method has changed my entire life. Dramatic? Yes, but that's the way I roll. When we first had our son, Silas, about two years ago, he was not the easiest baby. So getting time to get into the shower and style my hair afterwards was practically unheard of. So I needed to come up with a way to not look like a drowned rat and hide the hot mess that I was feeling like inside on the outside. So I started looking into the curly girl method because I was convinced that I could turn my slight wave into a beautiful bouncy curl. And while that did not happen, it did change my hair for the better. In fact, I recently just got my hair um, not colored. So a natural blonde, whatever. I recently went to my stylist and she said, wow, this is the healthiest I've ever seen your hair. And I thought, oh, you're so nice. Okay, tell me more. Now, to be fair, she is also one of my best friends, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but she still gave me a compliment nonetheless, and she's usually pretty honest when it comes to this condition and the state of my hair. And I welcome it. Sometimes I need a hard knock to make sure I'm doing the right things in life. So Alicia, if you're watching this, I appreciate you. So basically what I was looking for when jumping into the curly girl hair method was a way to spend less time on my hair, use less product because hair product is expensive and now we have three babies to feed and maintain the style of my hair longer. The first step in the curly girl hair method is to figure out how to wash your hair less. And the best way to do this is to switch over to a paraben and sulfate free shampoo. So of course that's the first thing I did. I don't have any pictures of myself during this time because it was a greasy hot mess. It took a while for my scalp to form like a normal balance because for so long I was stripping away all of the oils that my scalp was creating um, and then having to replace it with conditioner and other sorts of products like that. So basically blowing through a bunch of hair products because I was stripping away the nutrients and then trying to add it back in. So the transition to paraben and sulfate free shampoo was ugly. It was not cute. It was about three or four weeks and 10 to 20 cans of dry shampoo, but I made it through to the other side. And now because I've gotten my scalp in a condition where um, it produces its own oils and it naturally balances itself, I can go as long as four to five days without washing my hair, which as a mom and as someone who runs her own business and attempts to make YouTube videos, that is a huge bonus to me. So while I started it to try to encourage curly hair, what I found out is I actually spent a heck of a lot less time styling my hair. Another recommendation that the curly girl method has is to not apply conditioner on your scalp, like from this ear section down. And that's something I've actually already done for a long time, but it's something that I continue to do. Again, because we're letting our scalp naturally balance stuff out and we're not introducing any moisturizers up there, it tends to figure itself out just fine. And bonus, I use less conditioner because I'm only doing it on the ends and not all over my head. And because I'm only washing my hair every four to five days, that means I'm only blow drying and styling every four to five days. Every once in a while, I'll do a touch up um, on some of the in-between days, but really, I'm not using as much heat on my hair because I don't need to wash it as often. Another area that the Curly Girl Method really emphasizes is how to make your style last longer. And this is not gonna be record breaking. This is something that moms everywhere in the world absolutely love and probably use a bunch of, and that is dry shampoo. But the thing is, because my scalp had reached this new balance, I didn't need to use as much of it. So here's how it normally goes. On day one, I wash my hair, I style my hair. By the end of day two, it's usually starting to look a little greasy. So I will go ahead and apply dry shampoo. So when I wake up in the morning, it has absorbed absorbed all of those excess oils and my hair is looking fresh. Usually I can make it through day three relatively unscathed and then by the morning of day four is when I need to apply more dry shampoo. But this is because I've gotten my scalp to the point where it doesn't need to overproduce oils to make up for the fact that I'm stripping all of the stuff away with parabens and sulfates. A little tip when it comes to using dry shampoo, put it in the night before or put it in your hair the morning of, do your makeup, and let that powdery substance soak up all that oil before you start touching it. Because you have oils in your hands, so if you spray it in and then immediately start working with it, that magical product is going to be absorbing the oils from your fingers and not just your hair. So you're gonna wanna spray it in and let it soak up all of that grossness before you start styling. Another way that the Curly Girl Method suggests making your style last is to pineapple your hair and or use scrunchies. So I like dove straight on into this. I actually don't even really use hair ties anymore at all, unless I'm specifically looking for a tied back look. I don't know about you, but I reach a certain point in the day where I'm like, I can't have hair on my neck anymore. I just don't want it around my face. I'm so done. And it actually causes me anxiety to have my hair down. 
but I used to not do anything with it because I was scared that the hair ties would make a dent in my hair and then I'd have to redo it the next morning. So I would just live in this like anxious hair on neck anxiety phase for hours because I didn't want to ruin all the effort that I had put in. Switching over to using scrunchies, however, completely negates that problem. I can throw my hair up, I can twist it into a bun and throw a scrunchie in it and pull it down the next morning and it looks perfectly fine. I also like to use a lot of clips for this, um, but scrunchies are more comfortable than clips. Also, it helps me to feel like I'm harnessing nine-year-old me, which is always really important when you're wanting to feel youthful, you know? Another area that the Curly Girl Method really emphasizes is how to get less frizz. Nobody wants frizzy hair, everyone wants something smooth and luxurious, and no one wants to deal with all the little flyaways because they're freaking obnoxious, let's be honest. So a couple things that I do. I now only use a wet brush on my hair. I actually started using these because when my girls were toddlers, it was like a Herculean effort to brush their hair. They would act as if it was some sort of medieval torture device. So I turned to my bestie um, hairdresser friend and was like, help me, I need something. Cause she also has a young girl about a year older than my girls. And she was like, wet brush, you gotta use a wet brush. And now we have like eight of them. And it's not because I need eight of them, it's because my children always misplace them. But using something like this is especially helpful because when your hair is wet, as you most likely know, it is in its most fragile state. So you want a way to brush through your hair without causing more breakage. So this has been immensely helpful in my hair care routine because with my crazy hair that doesn't ever make up its mind, I do need to be able to brush it when it's wet in order to blow dry it properly and get the style that I want out of it. So I'm definitely not one of those, let it air dry to 90%. It would be a hot mess if I did that. So using something like this to comb through all of those knots, tangles, and curls to get a straightened look that I want is, you know, helpful. The next thing that the Curly Girl Method really, really, really emphasizes is to not dry your hair with a regular terry cloth towel. Oftentimes they will recommend doing an old t-shirt, um, or something along those lines and just kind of squeezing the moisture out instead of rubbing your head because again that adds to frizz. I wanted to do something different because there's only so many of my husband's old t-shirts that I could steal so I ended up picking up Turkish towels. Y'all not only are these delicious and floppy and make a beautiful statement in a bathroom, but they're actually better for your hair. So now I exclusively use Turkish towels for my hair, for my body, and not only are they absolutely stunning, but they have done wonders for my hair. So instead of doing like a rough dry with a normal towel, I will take this and either do like the turban style thing and let my hair sit there for a little bit, or it literally just kind of squeeze like this to get the excess moisture out before I blow dry my hair. And when I first started this whole process, I was talking a lot with that hairdresser friend that I mentioned and I was like, hey, I really wanna figure out what products to use to make my hair more curly and cause I wanna use less heat on it, AKA I don't have time to blow dry my hair. And she actually said, it's not necessarily a concern using heat on your hair as long as you use a heat protectant. So that's something I had completely overlooked before. I had never used a heat protectant on my hair. Like, oh no, that's not good. And ever since I introduced one into my routine, I have found that my hair is smoother it has less split ends and overall just looks better. So my encouragement to you is to not necessarily be afraid of heat tools, like so many things out there tell you like, no heat on your hair, no heat on your hair. But if you are going to do it, make sure you use a heat protectant to protect your hair from the heat. So basically here are my findings and my very non-scientific experiment that we did here. Using the curly girl method and all of the ideas that they suggest has actually made my hair healthier in every aspect. Has it made my hair more curly? Uh, no, not really. It's always gonna be the level of curl that it is. And maybe one day I will find a holy grail curly hair product that's just gonna change my life. But until then, using these steps has actually helped me to get the healthiest hair I've ever had in my life. So even if you don't have curly hair, or even if you have immensely curly hair, consider implementing some of these things into your hair care routine and you will be really surprised at what happens. You'll wash your hair less often, which means you're using less product, which means you're using less heat to style your hair and you're saving time. So it might take a while to get there, but trust me, when you get to washing your hair every four to five days, there are so many things you can do with that extra time. So many things, like film YouTube videos and pick up after your children because you have time for that now. So before we go, I wanna share with you a couple of the products that I like to use in my hair that I found really, really helpful. And this is gonna kind of seem like um, a sponsored video for Kevin Murphy hair products. It's not, okay? But uh, speaking of which, I have the Blonde Angel line from Kevin Murphy, both the color enhancing shampoo and conditioner. 
One thing I will say about this packaging though is that it's absolutely dreadful and it gets purple shampoo all over my shower so I have to actually leave it like this. But it leaves my hair smelling really, really good and feeling really, really fresh. So I highly recommend these. But that doesn't mean that I don't go for the cheap stuff too. I am obsessed with these two shampoos from Amazon. I will link them below. I am probably on my fourth or fifth bottles of each of these. One is a lemon sage tea tree rosemary infusion oily hair shampoo. And the other one is a tea tree supreme shampoo. So obviously if you don't like tea tree, these are not for you, but they are both paraben and sulfate free. And I just keep coming back to them because I love the way they make my hair feel. When it comes to leave-in conditioner, which I do apply after every wash, uh, my favorite has been Kevin Murphy's Staying Alive. I love the way this smells. I love that it makes my hair easier to brush. And I love that it actually makes the ends of my hair touchable <laughs> because if I don't use this stuff, it's not cute. And again, another Kevin Murphy product, uh, thanks to my bestie, is Kevin Murphy Smooth Again Anti-Frizz Treatment, which is a smoothing lotion. This is the heat protectant that I use. I do find that if I use too much of it, it can sometimes make the ends of my hair a little greasy, so I'm still learning like the balance of this particular one. Um, but this has been my go-to for quite a few months and I'm really, really enjoying it. Special shout out to scrunchies and clips that are literally all over my house because you never know when my hair on neck anxiety is gonna strike and I'm gonna need to throw my hair up. So both of these, I believe, are by the brand Scrunchy, but like, they're scrunchies and clips, you know, it's, there's nothing miraculous about them. Except for the fact that they don't destroy your hairstyle and rip out all of your hair every time you go to remove that hair tie. And last but most certainly not least, because this is probably the most popular item in my hair care collection, are dry shampoos. Oh, every mom's best friend. My two favorites happen to be Bedhead's Rockaholic Dirty Secret Dry Shampoo. I have been using this stuff for years and I always come back. It's a little bit more expensive, but I love that it not only absorbs oil, but adds some texture to the root of my hair as well. The other one I've recently started using is a much more cost-effective version, and that is Batiste Instant Hair Refresh, and this is the blonde version. One thing I will say about this is do not apply it if you're wearing a white shirt or a white sweatshirt, because it does have some color to it and it does leave a stain. So not the most ideal, but it's more cost-effective when this is like 20 bucks a bottle, so I use this more sparingly or on days when I really want to impress people. And then as far as the Turkish towel is concerned, unfortunately I bought it at a boutique in Oahu, so that's not super helpful. There is no tag on it. I don't know where it's from other than that, but there are some amazing options on Amazon. I will link those down below as well. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully using some of these tips in your hair care routine will help you to cut down on time and product and frizz. I don't know, even if you don't have curly hair, maybe try the curly girl hair method and see if it works out for you. If you haven't done so already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and until next week, bye guys.